You know what? I hope you're ready to learn something cool <laughs> or maybe something warm and toasty because we're about to learn about the two ways people measure temperature, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Fahrenheit and Celsius. Wait a moment. Albert, um, the music is a little bit intense. We're not sailing the seven seas here. <laughs> We're learning about Fahrenheit and Celsius. Oh, this is nice. So here's the thermometer that shows 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit. We know it's in Fahrenheit because it has the letter F right here. The F tells us this temperature is in Fahrenheit. Check this out. This thermometer shows 36.6 degrees Celsius. We know it's in Celsius because it has the letter C right here. The C tells us this temperature is in Celsius. And some thermometers show us both. Here's a thermometer that shows us the temperature in Celsius on this side here and Fahrenheit on the other side. It has both. You can see the C for Celsius and the F for Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit and Celsius are two different ways to tell what the temperature is, so we can see exactly how hot or how cold something is. Now, in the United States, we usually use Fahrenheit, but in most other countries, people use Celsius. So if you live in the United States, you'll see temperatures in Fahrenheit most of the time. In other countries, you'll see temperatures in Celsius. Oh wow, a little frog. This is random, but it's perfect. Okay, little frog and kids, we're going to look at some different temperature situations and see what the temperature is in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Are you ready? Okay, cool. Look, someone's getting ice from the refrigerator. When water freezes, it turns into ice. The freezing point, the temperature when water freezes, is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice the F for Fahrenheit right here. But in Celsius, water freezes at zero degrees. The freezing point is zero degrees Celsius zero degrees Celsius. You can see the C right here for Celsius. So the freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit and zero degrees Celsius. If you live in the United States and someone says it's 32 degrees or less, you know it's freezing outside. If you live in another country, zero degrees or less means it's freezing outside. All right, check this out. Someone is boiling water and they're adding pasta. That's going to be so tasty. Mm. When water gets really hot, it starts to boil and turns into steam. The boiling point, the temperature when water boils, is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that's a lot. But in Celsius, water boils at 100 degrees. The boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. So the boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius. Awesome. Well, what if it's a warm day? Because thankfully the weather is never boiling hot. I mean, that would be really bad, right? On a warm, sunny day, the temperature might be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty warm, but it's still a nice day to play outside. In Celsius, that would be around 27 degrees around 27 degrees Celsius. So a warm day might be 80 degrees Fahrenheit or about 27 degrees Celsius.
You know what, little frog? <laughs> Let's look at just one more example, okay? Say we have a crisp fall day, all right? The air feels cool, but not chilly. On a day like that, the temperature might be around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. 60 degrees Fahrenheit. In Celsius, that would be about 16 degrees right around 16 degrees Celsius. So 60 degrees Fahrenheit is about the same as 16 degrees Celsius. Well, that's Fahrenheit and Celsius, two ways people measure temperature. In the United States, we usually use Fahrenheit, but in most other countries, people use Celsius. But no matter where you live, it's good to know a little about both. And now you do, because you did a great job learning. You know what, little frog? We've come to the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed, wait, I'm, I'm supposed to say that to the people watching. Um, I have to go, little froggy. Thanks for being in the video, okay? <laughs> If you had fun and haven't yet, you can click the red subscribe button. That would be cool. Thank you, patrons, for making videos like this possible. I appreciate you. And to all of you, thanks for watching. Mr. Whiskers appreciates it too. Well, I mean, he would if he understood YouTube, which I'm, I'm not sure he does. Anyway, I'll see you again next video.